In this video, I will explain how to place prefabs in a procedurally generated 2D dungeon. Here we have the result of my previous tutorial about procedurally generating 2D dungeon in Unity. The link will be in the description. The problem here is that the content is looking pretty bare, so there is not much going on here besides the walls and the floor. I want to fill it in with enemies and objects that will be placed randomly in those rooms that create our dungeon, but in some meaningful way, so we still can traverse the dungeon while keeping some idea of what is in separ each separate room. So here we have the room where the player is spawned, while the other rooms in my simple implementations are simply a fighting pits where the enemies are spawned and when the player will need to fight them. The general algorithm to place prefabs in a procedurally generated dungeon is first to collect the data about our dungeon, second we want to create a high level room system so that we can decide where to spawn a player and whether do we want to have a boss fight or where do we want to have just simple enemies and some treasure. And last step is of course to decide on the details so what exactly do we want to place inside those specific rooms. Now, my algorithm generates the dungeon using the random walk, so we take one step in the random direction and repeat the process until we create this sort of a shape that looks like a room. And we reuse the same thing to create corridors, so we just take a lot more steps in one direction to create this continuous corridor that we can later use to create a dungeon. So we basically create our corridor first in my implementation. Next we select different points on our corridor especially the end points which are simply dead ends and to use another random walk to create those rooms so at the end we have this procedurally generated 2d dungeon again you can learn all about it from my previous tutorial series now because our dungeon is generated using those steps that we ensure that there is a corridor connecting all those rooms, we can easily save the tiles corresponding to this corridor so that we can prevent any prop placement on those tiles, thus ensuring that the player can reach any of the rooms from our dungeon. At the same time, we know exactly what tiles represent which room. So here this, those pink tiles represent this room and those orange tiles rep represents this room. Basically what we know is that we have separate rooms so that we can create this high level logic of creating different rooms that are relevant to our game logic. And of course, if we subtract the tiles that represent the corridor, we are left with the area which we can fill with objects and enemies and there will still be clear path between different rooms. Now in the code, I have simply a dictionary that has the start position of the generation of a room as the key and the hash set of vector to int positions of the tiles that will represent each room. And I will also save as hash sets the floor position and corridor position. Now in the create corridors method I am using the random walk corridor so basically taking a lot of steps in one direction to generate those corridors and at the end of this generation I simply save this data into one of my hash sets the corridor positions so that I can use this later for my prefab placement. I do similar thing when generating rooms, basically I select different potential room positions and when I run this algorithm to generate a random walk for a single position, I save this data to my dictionary so if I uh, want I can access the room position so the starting point on the corridor as well as the uh, room floor as the hard set I have saved it all into my rooms dictionary. So if we take a look at the end result, we can simply select this room for example and place here the player so that there are no enemies here so we can safely start our game here, while in this room we can fill it in with the enemies and some other objects so that it is not that empty but it is still the enemy filled room so when the player enters here they will need to fight those enemies. So that is why we need all this data saved in our script. 
Now to get this kind of result we need to go to the step 2 which is creating a high level room system logic. So generally we will have some sort of an output from our algorithm and we will be able to distinguish the different rooms and the corridor section of our dungeon. Now depending on the game that we are making we want to adjust the dungeon to work with the game mechanics that we have. So here in my simple implementation I have created a spawn room for the player so that we are safe to assume that when we get spawned here no enemy will attack us immediately while the other rooms I have simply created for the enemies to be there and so that uh, we can fight through those rooms and collect some rewards probably depending on what we spawn as the content of those rooms. Now of course we could improve this system so that we for example have not only the enemy room and the player room but also create some treasure room and a boss or exit room so that this way we can introduce some level design into our procedural dungeon and we can make the game more interesting so for example we need to defeat the boss to exit the dungeon but the treasure room is on the opposite end of the dungeon so we need to traverse basically the whole dungeon to collect everything there is in our level. Now to create this we can use Dijkstra's algorithm. This algorithm basically allows us to start at some point and calculate the cost of movement for each or to each tile from the start position. So this is a heat map representing the Dijkstra's algorithm result where the green positions are small values so for, for example here is our player this green dot or cylinder and moving to this uh, position to the right or to the left will take simply one uh, so this will be the cost of the movement well to move here to this red area it will cost the most in terms of the movement points to move here now it is not about using those movement points but this way we can simply decide that okay our player starts here in this uh, room so in this room that is furthest we can for example place the exit and in the other one we can place the treasure in the room in between we can place enemies so depending on the distance or the uh, cost of movement we can decide on those rooms and for example we can use another Dijkstra's alg algorithm from the exit room and run it and find the furthest position from our exit and we run basically this algorithm to find the path through those corridors because we can have a different path depending on if we use the uh, Cartesian distance between those center points of the rooms and if we use only corridors we will find that this room is the furthest from our exit so here we can place the boss and for example the key to the exit while in the again in the room in between we can place other smaller enemies so that the player needs to defeat them and this is how we can create basically this meaningful layout of your dungeon the last step is to decide on the details so what exactly do we want to place in those rooms as I have mentioned, for my simple implementation I have created a player spawn room, so a room which will be filled with some smaller items near the walls, bigger items in the center, so in the open space, and the player spawn in the center of the room, so I am sure that it is on the corridor path, so that our player simply can exit this room, it doesn't, it doesn't need to destroy any of the objects to reach the exit. Now another room is the fighting pit room, so basically a room filled with enemies and again with some objects uh, on in the corners as well as uh, we can place some objects in the center of the room. Now what exactly do we want to place? Of course you can place some treasure chests or some stuff simply to fill in the empty space of our generated dungeon. So in my case I have figured that we would need some small items, so probably some torches, we could have some barrels or some bookshelves, so th something that you would expect to find in those rooms and we can place some bigger objects, so uh, rather than near the walls we can place in the center some uh, tables on which we can place some rewards or treasures or basically some other items that our player may need to interact with and if we place them in the open space here there is a higher chance that there will be available for the player to walk around them and check them out while uh, if we take a look at this part of this dungeon we can see that this torch is blocking the further path here first let's consider placing objects near walls we already know which tiles or which positions are the tiles belonging to our room 
So basically what we can do is run through each of those tiles and select it and then search for the neighbors that belongs to the same room. So if we try to select this object here or this tile and if we try to find eight neighbors so neighbors in eight directions for this tile we will find out that we have only five neighbors that belongs to this room well those other three do not exist in our room so they are outside of the room because they are walls and this way we know that this position is indeed near a wall because if it was in the open space of our dungeon we would know that it has all eight neighbors present so we can extract those now as the code goes, I have created this graph class that will have a constructor that will take in the tiles that represent our room and it will have static lists representing four neighbors, so neighbors in four directions and neighbors in eight directions as the offset from the base position and we have the methods that will simply calculate four or eight direction neighbors based on those offsets and we can use this for our dextra algorithm to find out all the neighbors of a tile or we can simply count those because we are returning a list of vector two int positions so if you count those and we have less than eight then we know that this is a uh, tile that is near a wall to use this graph we are going to have an item placement helper class that will have a list of free spaces so we are going to have this dictionary that will be based on the placement type which is simply uh, describing if this is an open space tile or near wall tile and basically this dictionary will be filled when i pass to this item placement helper the room positions so the tiles representing a room floor and also the room floor without the corridor in this constructor i will simply look for each position and check the number of neighbors that it has and based on this i will return a placement type near wall will have less than eight neighbors and uh, the open space position will have all the eight neighbors around it present now when we place an object inside our dungeon we need to remove it from the possible placement positions so basically i will remove it from this dictionary now the whole code behind this will be about getting the placement position and basically what we will do is have a while loop we are going to have some iteration number that we are going to use and basically this while loop will run this number of times or less depending on if we can find an open space that uh, meets our criteria of placement of an object and based on this placement type i will access either the near wall tiles or the open space tiles now next question will be about how we handle the items that are of greater size than one so one by one tile so back to our slides here we have a bigger object or an object that we want to place in the open space of our room if it only takes one tile we can simply find one tile that is empty in our open space tiles and place there the object now if an object is bigger for uh, here for example we have a table that has length of two tiles we need to run a for loop or two for loops that will scan the area up and to the right and if we find this we will simply place it and of course there might be a case where you want to keep the positions around this open so that our player can walk around this object or basically just to ensure that the area is walkable so if we place a lot of those objects player will be still able to traverse around those objects and here where we want to add some offset to our check so that we want to check if the area around this object is also empty and only then we will place this object so back in our code in this while loop where we have selected a start position where we want to place our object if the object is bigger i will have this method that will simply decide depending on if you want to add an offset or not what are the start and end x and y values and i will use two for loops to simply scan the positions up and to the right and based on this if i have all those positions free i will be sure that i can place there the object and this is also important that we want to place bigger objects first in our dungeon so that they can fit easily and we do not have to repeat a lot this while loop since this will take some time to generate our dungeon now to make our setup more modular we can create prefabs or even scriptable objects out of the definitions of our rooms 
So here I have the fighting pit room or enemy room. Basically what it contains is a prefab placement script that will allow us to place those objects. And then we have a list of enemy placement data, which contains the min and max quantity of this type of enemy, the enemy prefab and its size. So we can again uh, place it in a way that it does not collide with anything else that we have placed in our room as well it has some item data which contains again the min and max quantity so we can randomly select how many of those items will be placed in our room and it contains some item data and we have the same thing for our player but instead of placing the enemies we are placing the player and we can extend the system to create some uh, boss fight rooms or treasure rooms or anything that we want to have and what we can see is that if we take a look at the item data those are scriptable objects that describe our objects and for example table long is the long object so it has size x equals 2 and we want to place it first in our dungeon before we place something smaller like this torch it has only size 1 and 1 and of course we select what types of placement type does this object has if we want to place it near a wall or in the open space and of course we can add some other data to it to make the system very modular now if we take a look at the generated content we will see that it does not look that great now we have a lot of bookshelves here, they are not pointing in the correct direction, but of course you can change it by having a concrete sprite for those. But here for example this torch is basically blocking us the access here. So what we can do is we can ensure first that our enemies will only be placed in the open space area. So we can ensure that the enemies will not be placed for example here when they cannot get out. We also need to remember that if we have some game mechanic in our game, we can integrate our item so they are destructible so we can reach some areas that might be blocked by the items that we have placed but when we start playing it doesn't look that bad and if we start working through those dungeons and starting to uh, play with the game mechanics that we have we will see that the content of the dungeon does not matter that much at the same time, if we remove all those items, you will immediately see that this dungeon is pretty bare. Yet if we try to find some more enemies, this does not look like fun right now if we have no content. So here is where those items really add to the content of this game and the interactions that we implement will really make this very simple system work in our favor if we include those items into our procedurally generated dungeon. Now, if you want to learn more about creating this shooting mechanic, check out my Make a Juicy 2D Shooter Prototype video course. The link will be in the description of this video. So basically, this is the idea behind placing objects inside procedurally generated dungeon. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. It really helps me a lot. Subscribe to the channel. And if you want me to create a more detailed video of how the code works for this prefab placement system, let me know down in the comment section. See you in the next video.